and welcome to No Such Thing as a Bad Movie Podcast. I'm April Atmansky, and I'm here today with... Yabba Dabba Doo, it's Justin DeClue. <laughs> Uh, hey, Fred. Uh, it's it's Colin Cunningham. And who do we have on the line as our very special guest? It's Joe Ramoni, back for a second time. Thank you for having me back. Uh, I was on my of edge course. of my seat of him to do a Dino impersonation or something. I wasn't. I, wasn't gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I could have did a horrible uh, Mick. What is it? Mick Jagged? Yeah. Mick Jagged. Oh, I, yeah. I, just, I love rock puns. This, they're, they're so great. <laughs> me too. I love all puns. So this was the movie for me. Rock um, so puns. yes, we're talking about Viva Rock Vegas, the sequel to the Flintstones movie for our special 150th episode. Can you guys believe we've done 150 episodes? No, this is crazy. Well, this is a kind of a prequel. I didn't even know this until like 10 we, minutes, We didn't realize it was movie. a prequel until 15 minutes in the movie. The 150th um, episode spectacular. <laughs> yeah. So did you think this the story began with them divorced and their, their lives were <laughs> yeah. different? Yeah, I was just confused. Um, I was like, why? Like, why is he? Uh, okay, we'll get into it. But <laughs> it's like all this weird setup at the beginning is not like where I thought that the movie was supposed to start. Yeah. Although it does start in space. Um, but anyway, before we actually get into the movie, um, why are we talking about this movie? Because we're watching uh, one of Joe's episodes. Uh, That's right. On the Flintstones, the original, which I'd never seen before. And uh, yeah, and you'd mentioned Viva Rock Vegas in your uh, video. And I was like, we should do, we should get Joe back and do Viva Rock Vegas. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's funny you mentioned it. I, the reason that this movie is a prequel is mainly because John Goodman refused to do any sequels to the Flintstones. <laughs> and they were like, "What? What else can we do?" And that's, I guess, how a prequel came up, came to be. They're like, "Who's so the next best that... thing? The guy who oh. was in the Full Monty." <laughs> Is it the guy that was in the Full Monty? Mark Addy. Yeah, yes, Addy. okay. Because yeah. there's some other <clears throat> actor that looks like him that we are confused about, but no, it is in fact Mark Addy, who was also in Jack Frost. Right, Colin? Yeah, it's true. And okay. I feel like a lot of English actors just look like Mark Addy. Um, yes. He's he's quite a hunk. Can I say something <laughs> um, potentially controversial that might ban me from this podcast? What? What's that? I think that Mark Addy makes a better Fred Flintstone. Really? Well, yeah. I have to disagree. That is an opinion. <laughs> That you okay. may have. <laughs> I'm not saying okay. he's a better actor than John Goodman. I'm not well, saying no. he's better in this movie. I think for the character of Fred Flintstone, he does a better job. Because John Goodman is great. He's terrific. But in that in the Flintstones movie, he's it, it, John Goodman comes through. You know, yes. it, right. it's it's very, you know, similar to King Ralph. It's, so so it's you think that Mark Addy loses himself <laughs> in the role of Fred Flintstone? I, I think... Well, and I, I watched the behind the scenes DVD extra for this, and he was talking about how he really got into the role and how he watched a lot of Jackie Gleason actually, huh. in, uh, oh, okay, in so preparation going, for it. Uh, yeah, and Mark Addy is right back to the source. He's interesting. He's like, I think we were trying to make him like an American movie star for a little bit because mm -hmm. he he happened in that weird. I'll, I'll call like post Chris Farley, pre Kevin James, fat guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. He filled because he was on this American sitcom called Still Standing, which it, it was your standard like, oh, fat guy has a family and he's he's kind of bumbling. But he played an American guy. Mm. And it's weird. Yeah, it was. It's, it, I don't think you can even see it anymore. It ran for a few seasons. But I think we were <laughs> the, really trying the to make shut him, it like, down. They're like, none of this still standing. <laughs> it's bad. He's in that Chris Rock movie that I think Down to Earth he's in. Oh, yeah. He, he was in like a few oh. kind of big American movies in the TV show. I think they were really trying to make him like the next funny fat guy movie star. And wait, was he was he British or yeah, American? he's British. Uh, but I know that, but like in uh, Jack Frost. I think he was British. Was he really? Yeah, okay. he was British. Justin, he was like a British remember? rocker in the movie. That was like the gimmick. Uh, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, as far as his Fred Flintstone impression goes, um, I personally wasn't buying it. Uh, I was like, <laughs> well, I thought, I was like, and I I grew up watching the Flintstones, believe God. it or not. But I think, can you, I think that should be maybe... like child torture, making us watch the Flintstones. Have you watched an episode I, recently? I, 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 no, no, but I, I used to watch it with my family. Yeah, Why were we watching re was, reruns of the it. Flintstones? I, I guess so. I watched it in French, Le Pierre à Feu. <laughs> really? Yep. All I remember the uh, the uh, cigarette ads that he and Barney used to do. Okay, <laughs> but that's from like the 40s. <laughs> 
Hey, Fred. Uh, April, hey, Fred. I think you're let's have to... a Chesterfield. <laughs> you think that the Flintstone cigarette ads were in the 40s? <laughs> uh, Pre, like, World we're... War II? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> we have got news when for you. When did the Flintstones yeah, originally Flintstones air? Like, uh, Fred was like, buy war bonds. <laughs> <laughs> 60s? I, I don't know. 70s? Joe, yeah, you would know. When did the Flintstones start? I think the Flintstones started in the 60s. Okay, yeah. there you go. Okay. Yeah, so I think... Well, you know, Joe, you're coming at it from like a character perspective. I think when when April and I started watching this movie and he did the Yabba Dabba Do or, you know, whatever, we're just looking at it from like a, a more superficial uh, impression yeah. uh, aspect, you know, or we're coming at it from that angle. So I think, you know, John Goodman may kind of superficially sound and maybe look more like Fred Flintstone, but... You know, you're probably looking at the character. And also, right. the John Goodman charm does come through. Yeah. And I don't know if Mark Addy has charm in this movie. Mm. Um, I, I come to it from an entertainment perspective and say, <laughs> mm, I don't know about that. It's I also, a living. I mean, um, uh, Barney was absolutely terrible. Is it Stephen Baldwin? Stephen Baldwin. Um, okay. a weird, he's a weird choice. Well, okay. As far as my knowledge of this movie goes, mm-hmm. I only knew it as. Oh, isn't it? It's that funny, bad sequel to the Flintstones. Yeah. I had never seen it, and I only knew that Stephen Baldwin was in it. And it's like, <laughs> there's a one joke. word that should not be in that sentence, I think, April. It's <laughs> funny, funny, bad funny. sequel. No, not actually funny, but I mean, so I'd never seen any of this at all. Mm-hmm. But I think that I heard about, like, that Jane Krakowski is in it. Um, mm-hmm. and, and by the way, she was really She's good. She's pretty good. She's funny, mm-hmm. and she was a good Betty. Joe, do you have a attachment to this from seeing it as a kid? I do. Uh, I, I had the VHS tape. I remember that much. But you know what the weird thing is? Is like as a kid, I didn't. I didn't know what like Las Vegas was. It, yeah. it was it's like a weird <laughs> marriage of these two ideas where it's like let's make a kids movie set in this den of vice. Like I don't <laughs> quite know what they were going for, and it's a very weird. Like, what are your thoughts on the original Flintstones movie? Because I know people have mixed feelings on it. So I watched it recently for a podcast, and I was uh, shockingly charmed by it, especially the fact that, like, there's so many Jim Henson puppets in it Mm -hmm. that, like, everyone is dedicated to making a Flintstones movie. And I got to say, going into this new one, I was even a little bit excited because Brian Levant was back, Mr. Jingle all the way himself. Mm -hmm. And boy... Yikes! But we'll get to that soon. What do you Wait, guys think of the Flintstones? Did he did he direct the first one? Yes, he did. He did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Spielberg produced both of them. Right. And if you uh, read interviews about him talking about the Flintstones, like he loves the Flintstones. He's like, "This is a tough a rock. We got a crack. I brought in uh, fifteen writers to do uh, drafts on the first one to make sure it was perfect." Yeah, and you know what? I also I grew up with I, like I watched the first one uh, when it came out. I, did I see it in theaters? I have no idea, but it was definitely a rental and mm-hmm. uh, I really liked it. I wasn't like my favorite movie or anything, but I always remember really liking it. And um, yeah, when Joe's like video came out, I was like, yeah, that movie was actually pretty good. <laughs> it, like when he showed all the clips from it, like, and I tried to get Colin to watch it in anticipation for this review but um, we couldn't find a, a copy of it streaming, and then we had to push the, the recording, and so it just never happened. So yeah. Colin has still never seen I, the I've original. I've never <laughs> seen it, but I've seen so many reviews on it. Um, mm-hmm. And clips, that, right? That I kind of feel like I have, like I, I kind of know it. You gotta you gotta see the whole thing, though. Yeah, I mean, that was coming uh, after Jurassic Park. That was, you know, catching like dino fever. Yeah, which we've talked happened. about many times on this podcast. That was like one year after Jurassic Park. Uh, the uh, I think ILM did the effects for the first one. That was a big deal. And they mm-hmm. re- look pretty good from what I remember. Um, yeah. And they came back for the second one, right? <laughs> to make sure they were so polished. Well, unfortunately not. They may have been back for the bidding process. and then, This uh, film cost $65 million. Oh, my God. I mean, I think that like there's some artistry in this movie. Yes, the, the effects do not look as good as the first one. Although I really only remember the CGI Dino in the first one. Mm-hmm. The re- and there was a puppet Dino, too. But it was mostly practical, right, guys? They, they had the big, like, brontosaurus Was that uh, CG? No, I, don't, I, I don't remember. Most there, of was, the there was a marriage were, of them. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. they were mostly practical in the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's weird because this one... I feel like they just reused all that stuff they had in storage. Like, it's not... <laughs> William Sandell was the production designer on the first one. He doesn't return here. And I'm curious into just how much of the props and sets they were able to reuse. There is one noticeable shot that's a, that's just, uh, like, stock footage from the first movie. It's right before we get to that Bronto King, I think it's called. 
and they cut to like that downtown area from the first movie. It's so clearly oh. like a stock footage shot that because that's the thing. This movie, it's like yeah, they they build a lot. It's it just feels like the scope is scaled down. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, which usually happens for sequels where they you know the or budget prequels. is lowered that they you know, they can't get the stars. Back. It feels like a direct to video sequel. It, it really does. Does. exactly what it yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't. It was a theatrical film. That's crazy. How much? I did mean, they make? Stephen Baldwin. They had no one better than that. Like, was the director <laughs> going to the mat, going like, you know, we don't need stars. What we need is yeah. talent. There's we need no, Baldwin up on screen. There's no big stars in this. And when you look at the first one, like John Goodman and Rick Moranis. Yeah. Like uh, you couldn't. I mean, and like, Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, you couldn't think of like a better cast for the first one. Like just mm-hmm. off the top. Rick Moranis is so good as Barney in that first one. Yeah, it's very strange to see Stephen Baldwin. He just doesn't fit the He's just And the like, hair. The hair it's yeah. like Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna make any, you know, choice to match this with the first movie. Let's just make him look like Shemp. That's, that's what they go for and it's like <laughs> Yeah. Also his character is like it, it, I'm not I'm not crazy. It's like ten times dumber than Barney has ever been. Like in the first one, he actually is smarter than Fred and he Yeah, it's a this, great gimmick. Yeah. But like Fred is the lead and he's a big dum dum, but it's really uh Barney that's pulling all the strings in the background. You're so right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then well, in this one Barney is the smart one in yeah. the first one. And well, here he's He's much dumber just, than Fred. Yeah, dumb he's dumbs, so dumb. Yeah. Well, I mean, they can't give him everything. They can't have the looks and the brains. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Baldwin has found God, and he uh, thanks him every day for everything he's gotten for him. Oh, I know boy. you guys have talked about Jingle All the Way. Is that the only Brian Levant, Levant? film you've done? I yes. Uh, what else has he done? I mean, I looked him up. He's done a lot, but I don't think I've seen any of them except uh, Jingle I All the Way. I could run through. He, I've seen got Beethoven. Beethoven and uh, Snow Dogs. Mm. Nope. I've not the seen Spy either. Next Door. <laughs> nope. Nope. A Christmas Story 2. Nope. Uh, oh nope. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it's a weird blend of direct-to-video stuff and like family comedies. His his highest rated movie on IMDb is Jingle All the Way at 5.7. Well, that's Rightfully a that's a so. Christmas classic, 5.7. 5. 5.7 5. 7 out of 6, right? Uh, yes. Right? <laughs> oh, God. He started with Problem Child 2. Oh, jeez. Uh, he, he did... Oh, he did Are We There Yet? The Ice Cube comedy. Oh, my God. Uh, something very charming about the director, though, is he is a huge collector of toys and stuff like that. If you look mm. up interviews of him on YouTube, he'll always be, like, flanked by his giant wall of toys. Uh, well, I don't know. He does seem like a great guy. He yeah, he does. Like he's just having fun, and it, who, I don't and know. And who maybe genuinely he's... loves making the movies as mm-hmm. opposed to being like oh it's for kids who cares yeah they have the attention span of peanuts yeah and th- i think that came through in this movie like yeah, i think so it d- i i was saying that when we watched it like it doesn't feel like this is some cash grab and they just didn't care like yes it's not what the first one was <laughs> but like there is artistry and even if it's reused stuff like it feels like the actors even though they're not great i don't think yeah. they're trying you know, I, everyone is, 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 I think, on board. Nobody's phoning it in. and Right. Especially yeah. not Alan Cumming. It, it doesn't mean that it's good. <laughs> no. Um, I'm not saying this is a genuinely good movie, but this is a lot better than most of the stuff we watch for this podcast. Oh, for sure. D- well, I mean, depending on it. But I mean, is it, is it better than Axe and Jackson? No, but it's better. I'm sorry? <laughs> Axe. <laughs> Action Jackson. I can't say it. Action, Action Jackson. But Action it's a hell of a lot better than like, you know, is Pluto Nash the new movie that we're going to continue to shit on? I don't think any movie week. worse than that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Joe, do you have a defense for Pluto Nash? <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. That's another one I haven't seen in like 20 years, and I think it's best. Yeah. yeah. Don't, yeah. don't revisit it. Leave it buried. Yeah, leave it yeah. in the past. Just, just leave your fond memories of it. Uh, All right. Do you want to jump into the plot, April? Start us off with <laughs> well, uh, um, Universal. Oh, well, I, I love it when they mess with the logo. April, <laughs> um, April I was huge like, laugh yeah. for April. Yeah, um, Universe Shell, <laughs> and the, the font is made of bones. Um, yeah. But uh, here's the thing that I didn't know about this movie. Um, the Great Gazoo is in it. And, All right, oh. I have some questions about The Great Gazoo, because <laughs> in the show, he has powers, doesn't he? I uh, thought so. Joe? Like, he can do like weird genie stuff. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and it was also a character that came like in the last two seasons of that show. It was was, like an entirely like a we're out of ideas, we need Mm -hmm. something to mix it up. How about an alien? And (laughs) that's why it's so weird here because this is your 
prequel and it, it mm. and look like what no one mentions him in the Flintstones movie. Yeah. Of course not. Maybe he erases their memory at the end of the, the But in the 90s assignment. like kids love the Great Gazoo. He was on a lot of merchandising stuff, I remember. It's so weird like, because we had Gazoo fever. <laughs> I, I I remember getting into an argument with an old boss of mine. I think I've told this story on the podcast before, but we were talking about the Flintstones and I mentioned the Great Gazoo. And he had no idea who I was talking about <laughs> and like accused me of lying and like making this character up. <laughs> you dumb dumb. Like you making up a great it's like, oh, you, alien. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, I'm a huge Flintstones fan and I don't remember a great kazoo or any alien. What are you talking That's about? That's wild. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Like everybody knows the great kazoo. It's like just Google. Was this before the internet? Uh, no. Yeah, we were all binging back then. He's like, just bing it. <laughs> yeah. This is like early 2000s. Ask Jeeves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, just, original voice of the Great Kazoo, Harvey Corman, in this movie. Oh, oh, so that's why he's in this movie. <laughs> well, yeah. also, come on, it's Harvey Corman. He's, he's also the dicta bird in the first one. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, um, the cool bird puppet. Yeah, star of the uh, Star Wars Holiday Special. Yeah, to be honest, I <laughs> I only really know him from the Star Wars Holiday Special. Oh, um, that's the, me. The Carol Burnett, Burnett show. Uh, okay, well, that's a little before. Well, my that's time, way but, before our time. Um, I know, but it's like come I have on. It was, seen like it was, a few reruns. It was of before. That. For my time, but yeah, you can look up uh, clips on YouTube of like the uh, the bloopers and stuff from the Carol Burnett show. Uh, but, t- him and Tim Conway cracking each other up is really really funny. But yeah, this movie starts in space <laughs> in this ridiculous <laughs> alien, you know, mix of as Colin was saying, it's a practical head and like a puppet body, and there, there it does start with some CG, but and it's just like I don't like looking at it. Well, yeah. no, it's like, uh, I thought I was watching the Flintstones. It's what practical. Is it's practical both so the head is practical and the body is a puppet but the hands are practical so they're both like Ugh. two scaled down elements sort of stitched together well uh, i sent april a photo because i was watching the behind the scenes <laughs> i'm gonna send it to you guys right now <laughs> he's he's he wears the full costume for the but the body is bigger maybe they maybe <laughs> so they, i don't oh i think possible. they scaled it down yeah. they just yeah that makes you, sense. Your, your visual effects, you know, what, is that what they would, they kept his body, they just yeah, altered their proportions you, of it? You can tell that the hands are real, so I figured that they filmed them separately, but that uh, ma- that makes sense. They would film them together and then shrink the body down after the fact. It's In like, that regard, kind of impressive? Yeah. I mean, it, it's better than doing like a you know, all CG body or something like that because... And, the, and this is year 2000, yeah. everybody, so CG wasn't quite there yet. We weren't there yet, and also they didn't have the budget for it. As you can see the wide shot of the UFO with all the gazoos flying around. First of all, it is gazoo. Uh, all my life, called him the great kazoo. I've been saying kazoo, but I remember seeing it spelled, and it was spelled with a G. Yeah. But I think I thought it was just pronounced kazoo. And then they, of course, make that Clearly joke. Clearly they know that, so he's correcting everybody every time, uh, you know, they say his name. And I think all the other ones are Taylor Negron or all the other aliens on that ship. Oh, no shit. Who is yeah, that? Yeah, the late Taylor Negron. He's the nothing but trouble. He's like the Latin guy. Oh, yeah. shit. Traveling I was with on, them. on Seinfeld. He was on Seinfeld, yes. Yeah, so yeah. I, I know him. <laughs> I, I didn't recognize him here, but that's great. <laughs> Um, also, Mickey is in this movie. I know. Oh, my God. Danny Woodburn shows up later. Um, but we'll get to that. So apparently the great gazoo is kind of like the loser of. Um, is there a name of this alien species? I don't know. I think gazoo is. I, I thought gazoo was his <laughs> name. Um, so he uh, gets sent to Earth uh, on a mission to find out how humans breed. To study their mating rituals, I guess. Odd choice. But so okay. do you think he watched uh, Fred and Wilma have sex? <laughs> Absolutely. I was Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, I I was waiting He's taking w- notes. Yeah, when he, he and Barney were just together at the beginning, I was like I was joking that the kazoo would just say, "All right, now get to it." And then he, he and then he's fucking, please don't make us do it. And, and then he says that. <laughs> and he has like yeah, and then he says it like, "Well, hop to it." And I'm like, "Oh my god." Yeah, um because like, Also in I I in the show can only Fred and Barney see him that too. Yes. Okay. I believe yeah. that's the case. Okay. I think so, yeah. I don't. So it's like, is that something this movie invented, or is, is <laughs> no? Because then everybody would be like, like yeah. talking to Gazoo. Yeah, I think and it's for just people a, just that a, haven't seen the show, like the original show, and you only know the Flintstones of pop culture. The show is so slow, but it was famous for playing in like prime time in the evening. Mm-hmm. That it was a animated sitcom. It was but like the Simpsons watch, of its time. If you watch the Gazoo episode, it's like, hey Gazoo, what's going on? Yeah, dum dum, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> 
I should go. I don't know, I should, it's like, oh my god! I should go back and try and watch an episode because, again, I remember laughing and loving the show. Hey, so. Bon, what about some Chesterfield cigarettes? Okay. They were all animated, like in that Hanna Barbera limited animation style, and I believe they were shipping it off to Mexico at that point. Oh boy! Mm. Wow. Um, so. Gazoo gets sent to Earth, and then, then what, what's next? Laughing, I'm just thinking about what's going. on. Yeah, <laughs> so funny. I don't have notes in front of me. So dying. well, I do. Okay. We're introduced to, to Fred and Barney, and like my first note is like their voices are terrible. <laughs> and like, <laughs> Joe, and... Joe, bring a defense to this. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying it's a good film performance. I think he's a, a good. He's a, he's doing more of a Fred Flintstone shtick than got John Goodman did. Do any of you have a Fred Flintstone voice, Colin? Master impression. Because that seems like a go-to dad thing Dude, doing Fred Flintstone. All I do is just like, hey, Bon. And like, <laughs> that's okay, it. Yeah. Bon, yeah, that's, that's about it. <laughs> I sound, I sound, Wait, Marge sound like Marge Simpson, yeah. <laughs> me, me, Barney. Me being, me being sick oh, is help, Barney, helpful. Let's go have a smoke behind the, behind the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Fred. Uh, Straight whatever. to the moon. <laughs> that's not bad. I'm going to beat you, Wilma. Straight to the moon. So, yeah, we're introduced. This is when we were kind of cluing in. I'm like, what's going on? It shows them at the, the rock quarry. Yeah, and I was like, why are they training? They're taking training yeah. for, for the cranes. Did it, did it explain that this is a prequel at some point and we just missed it? Or are you just no, supposed, you're to, supposed get- to just catch on? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. T- I'm the dumb Well, it took us a while. <laughs> oh, dumb dumbs. Yeah. <laughs> it's also crazy to think about it's only six years after that first movie. Yeah, yes. that's it, it, wild. It just, it, it just, it looks and feels like a different. Like I know, like you know, visual effects had made a lot of leaps and bounds in that time, mm-hmm. but it really does. Just from the the get go, it feels like a different style. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it has less of like a. Like Some home. may say 2000s core, considering <laughs> that it came out in the year 2000. Yeah, two, I mean, two, 2000 movies come up a lot on this podcast. 2002, I think, is the year that really weird shit happened, you know, like Master of Disguise. And uh, yeah. was that when Son of the Mask came out, too? Speaking of Alan Probably, Cumming. Probably, yeah. Poor Alan Cumming. Oh, yeah. Playing this he ridiculous. Fire his agent. Yeah, this ridiculous character in this. And then, like, Son of the Mask, where he plays. 2005 with Son of the Mask. Oh, boy. Oh, my yeah, God. So that was wow. five years later. <clears throat> but, but Wait, in this movie, two ridiculous characters. It's true. We'll get to his second character, who I actually love. He demanded that. He's like, yeah. I need, yes. I need yeah. a Peter Sellers like uh, number of rules. <laughs> no, I think yes. he was like, can you just get me something that's not a floating head? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like strapped into this rig or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Uh, I have to confess, I like his second character. <laughs> Dude, me too. Mick Jagged? Yeah. He doesn't come until way, way later. Um, but yeah, I was confused at this scene because I was like, oh, like, why is the dinosaur not real? Like, is this the level of practical effects in this movie? Because he's controlling a training brontosaurus. Yeah. And then, <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, I Wait thought that, I thought that yes. was... April thought. It's exactly, <laughs> it's exactly that, Justin. <laughs> For sure I thought. Wow. I thought that that's what the... <laughs> It's supposed to be for people who don't know. It's this, supposed that to be is crappy. Such a like mom style reaction of like, look at those effects. Look at those effects. They can't even do a dinosaur right. <laughs> but then no, they cut to a real dinosaur. But it is a horrible CG monstrosity. monstrosity yeah. <laughs> oh, they cut to the real dinosaur who's like, I'm gonna shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot the dinos talk. Yeah, we don't waste yeah, any time. Too. Uh, this thing like farts on everybody and bl- it blows everybody hundreds of feet. <laughs> There's something everybody. funnier about a puppet dinosaur talking than there is about a CGI dinosaur yeah. like reacting. Especially when it's kind of the CGI. They they clearly couldn't get ILM back for this. So they didn't have the budget for it, but uh, I mean they had the budget for it. Sorry. Uh, I made a mistake. The budget wasn't $65 million. It was $83 million. Oh boy. Okay. Um that's a lot in 2000. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird because, like, I'm th- I was thinking of the scene in the first movie where they go bowling, and, like, every little, like, appliance is invented really cleverly there. Yeah. And it's, like, some kind of crab that comes down and, like, picks up the bowling pins and brings them up. Like, it, later in this movie, it's just a monkey. <laughs> I, I laughed because it's, a pin, it's a pin monkey. Get it? Yeah. It's a joke, and I laughed. I, it's I, funny, but it's just, like... <laughs> it's not nowhere it's, near what the first movie was, though. 
Like, I'm, was that their commentary on, like, the technology within this world evolves? <laughs> yeah, it's just, yes. like, a real, like, yeah, it gets more boring. Be, it used to be a monkey, and then it became... They're, they're just crap. enslaving other yeah. um, I, I, species. I will say one of my favorite things is later on in the movie, someone uses a remote control, and then, like, the front opens up, and, like, this bird flies out and just pushes and the And it button. goes two feet, and then comes back. <laughs> yeah. But then they do it also, again. Also, someone has a camcorder at one scene, which I'm yeah. like, yes. how, yeah. how was this working? Yeah. Uh, stone quarter thank you very much uh, carved, carved from rock yeah because they show a, a, a picture being taken and it's a little like pterodactyl on there that like Chisels. carves it with his yeah, beak so it's like right. what is there like a little animal chiseling away in the camcorder yes. like oh, very man. fast you can't question but, the logic i know like those photos uh they don't look so good either so <laughs> what could the camera be spitting out uh my favorite flintstone sings is a robot chicken sketch and i feel like i'll be cursed for mentioning robot chicken a show that i believe still exists it, somehow it was still yeah. on as of like a year ago so <laughs> that's why yeah. that's insane but there's, there's a sketch where uh barney wants fred's fruity pebbles and then he kills him <laughs> and then all the appliances he's like witnesses <laughs> he has to kill them all too yeah i think i've seen that <laughs> but you didn't laugh when you saw no i mean well you it's just, just gruesome it. yeah but just uh, stared blankly <laughs> have you guys ever seen the uh, seth mcfarlane like flintstones concept no Art? no yeah i guess seth mcfarlane was doing a supposed to do a flintstones reboot oh boy Mm-mm. uh i guess on fox it would have been this was like yeah. right at, at like the peak of american dad when all that stuff was really big mm-hmm. and he was gonna do a new flintstones so it's like the flintstones characters drawn in like family guy style it's very strange oh, you can boy. find them online yeah i should look that up that sounds My bizarre go- i just searched flintstones fox and they announced that they're doing a new show called bedrock Oh boy! What like recently? In uh, March tenth, twenty twenty three. They're so not recently, okay. so maybe it got uh, turned down. Is it going to be? Was, is it uh, going to be like a live action, like Riverdale? No, I don't think so. Because <laughs> Stephen Root would play Fred Flintstone, which is a good casting. Oh, I love Stephen okay. Root. Good. Um, yeah, yeah it's, the Flintstones are due for a reboot. <laughs> They're yeah, rebooting no, everything no, no. else. Like, I'm, just saying, it's, it's I'm not like, saying they should. It's got to be like a Riverdale reboot. It's very dark and like sexy. <laughs> I, I, oh, I, but yeah. so they always have to action. alter the title just enough to make it sound cool. So like the Flint Rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Remember like they did it's just um, Bel Air, the Fresh Prince. But, oh, <laughs> that's what the that's what the spinoff is called. It's called Bedrock. Oh boy, <sighs> sounds like the porn parody. You know. <laughs> I mean, I would not know, but uh, <laughs> you, you know yeah, that there just, that exists. That'd be bed bedcock. They would just <laughs> oh, you're right. It. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> uh so now uh, we, where are we, we in the movie? Well, yes. We have to we, meet Wilma. Meet Wilma, and this is where I started putting two and two together. I'm like, oh, this is a prequel. Well, I was confused. <laughs> I was like, is this Wilma's baby shower? Is this Wilma's wedding no. shower to Fred? Oh, she hasn't met Fred? Yeah, it's just a, a friend of hers is having a bridal shower, and we're introduced to Joan Collins, who's replaced Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. Uh, same character, right? As uh, Wilma's mom was it known in the the show that Wilma came from a rich family, or was that kind of just? God, a- I don't know. I don't think so. I think that's something they made up for the movie. Yeah, the whole like contention between Fred and Wilma's mom came from the movie. Oh, mm-hmm. I see. Okay, there, that wasn't really in the cartoon. They were she the character existed, but it, they they really leaned into that heavy honeymooners influence for some of this stuff yeah i mean it's a tale the whole plot of this movie is it's just a tale a, as old as time oh my god um so wilma is like rich girl who doesn't like her life and she is played by uh actress from third rock from the sun i forget her we name. all got third rock fever <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know her name um get your 3d glasses because the, the special 3d episode is playing soon dude i really? remember that <laughs> yeah yep, I, I know you do I, I was a big fan of third rock from the sun i thought it was hilarious um, and she never really did anything else. Like, nope. not big. Uh, She's in Spy Who Shagged Me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Briefly, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, very briefly. That's how I remember her. And I, I think it's just, I think it's a problem of she's too tall. And um, so she's too tall to ha- to have male co-stars. And I, I, I'm sorry that this this is Hollywood. But, uh and but she's really funny. She was hilarious on that show, and she's hot. So why didn't she get roles? You know, uh, who knows? Maybe she got. I'm, look, I'm looking here, and she has been on the Righteous Gemstones in 2023 oh, for nine like episodes. Nine so. episodes, okay. So yeah. that's that's good. Like again, very funny comedic actress. Mm-hmm. She should be acting all over the place, or you know, Justin. Least... What's her name, by the way? <laughs> yeah. Her name is Kristen Johnston. Thank you, Kristen Johnston. Okay. okay, too normal of a name. That's also a problem. Why she's not famous? <laughs> she should have changed that to Kristen Roxon or something. Oh, 
So she should have changed she her name to reflect the fact she was in the Flintstones. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we have some uh, cute puppets in this in this bridal scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess it's Jim Henson's company, right? Coming back. Probably, yeah. I don't know why they would get someone else. They've they've got to be the ones that are in storage from the first movie. Right. <laughs> they <laughs> just things. like repurpose them. Same There's no way puppets, they remade yeah. them for this because it's the only scene they're really. Dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, and then we have uh, Greg from Dharma and Greg. Yes. So I also used to watch Dharma and Greg. Can you tell I used to watch like, you know, musty TV and then TGIF in the in the 90s? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I watched Dharma and Greg quite a bit. I can't remember this actor's name, but now he's he's been on like a billion episodes of Criminal Minds. That's what he is. He's the lead of Criminal Minds. Yeah, right, right, right. Oh, well, um, he's, he's good. I, mean, I know him from Free Enterprise, the <laughs> movie about two nerds that I guess get involved with William Shatner in some way. Oh, God. Hmm. Yep. So, Sounds like a nightmare, like real life. <laughs> um, well, he arrives on a CGI kangaroo creature in this scene. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. This is so, like, extravagant. It's just so unneeded. Yes. It feels so... And I was watching the special features, and, you know, obviously it's all blue screen stuff, but he yeah. looks so out of place in this shot. I It is one of those, like, CGI shots where you uh, kind of, like, audibly go... Ugh. Like, well, it's loud. not. It doesn't <laughs> it looks, match the background. It looks so <laughs> terrible. The scale looks wrong. It's very weird. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, CGI artists. I feel like a Whoever traitor. You are. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, traitor. we can, we can, we can, and sorry, maybe insult. We can criticize um, bad CG, and this movie does have a lot of it. It does in spades. Um, but I, yeah, this. Sorry, my note was Gregorized on CGI kangaroo, and then my note after that, a prequel. <laughs> So we just now so we just like fifteen minutes to figure this out. Well, he looks exactly like Kyle MacLachlan's character in the first movie. Yeah, that's movie. a big problem with the movie. Is it looks like you got the budget version? Like, oh, we got yeah. the Flintstones at home. That like, yeah, uh. like he's dressed the same, same haircut, kind of the same character, not the same well, character. Well, the, na- the, the his name is Chip, and I think in the first movie it's cliff or something like that it's, it's yeah. very similar yeah it is a different character but it's almost like well why can't this just be the same yeah character? they look and act similarly and then also because they've replaced uh, uh elizabeth taylor with joan collins you're like okay well it's they, just they recast could have just right? swapped them out yeah uh, it is by the way uh, kyle mclaughlin is uh, cliff in the first movie okay so and this is chip yes um so it's like could, it's, it is confusing <laughs> well you know both rock Formations, I guess. Cliff, the chip is from rock. I they gotta get, get they it. Gotta get they gotta get in there I get it. Speaking of rock, uh, Wilma runs away because she doesn't want to get married. She runs to a diner. Uh, who do we get? Brian Setzer singing <gasps> Rock This oh, Town. No. Colin's, Colin's favorite, favorite band. Yeah, Rock This Town. And April's like, I don't get it. Where's the pun in the, the lyrics? And I'm like, it's called Rock, rock This I just, Town. I thought you know? they'd go one step further and do like, like Rock a, This Rock? Rock we'll This do, Rock. <laughs> we'll do like a parody version, you know, um, like later, uh, Anne Margaret, I think, sings some kind of oh, God. Viva Rock Poor Vegas. Anne Margaret. Yeah, oh. Viva Rock Vegas. Yeah, yeah, you know, kids love Anne Margaret. They and do. Also, and they know who she also is. Also the Elvis song, <laughs> Viva Las Vegas. I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we got Colin's favorite band and weren't they in Jing- didn't they do a song in Jingle all the way too? Oh, Brian Setzer did. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, maybe maybe the director is you know, a huge fan. But the song was it's Oh god, it, who knows. It, yeah. Some stupid Singing Christmas about song. Santa's sleigh. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Uh, With a guitar solo. Uh, and Colin uh, was like, "Oh, I hope Brian Setzer is going to be a main character in this movie. <laughs> we could just have rocking tunes the entire time." <laughs> Brian Setzer. Brian um, Setzer rock. Yeah. So, we're at like a a, a diner, um not unlike the one in the opening. Bronto King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The opening <laughs> sequence of the original show. McDonald's wanted nothing to do with this one. They were like, "You know what? Were they no, in the first no one? Rock Donald's here." Yeah, they were yeah, in the first well, one. Rock Donald's. Oh god. Right. Rock Donald's. Yeah, huge huge marketing push like there is, you know, they built an, a, a McDonald's replica on the set yeah and it was all over that movie here it's just it's kind of jarring because you associate mm-hmm. the way this world looks with a rock donald so to see like a burger king thing it's like oh that's weird. yeah it's strange and when the what, first movie what came what was going on behind the scenes of this movie like why is it this way like no <laughs> one came back well i noticed that spielberg amblin is credited he yeah. is not Oh. I thought I saw Spielberg's name in some I could be kind wrong. of credit, I, I, but I don't know if it was in the movie or just like, you know, on iTunes when you scroll down or something. Rosie O'Donnell does a voice in the movie, I believe. Yeah, so she came back to voice an octopus puppet. 
Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But why? But well, because she can't play the younger version of herself. That'd well, be it's weird. probably like I'm, I was watching your video, Joe, and it was it was clearly uh, John Goodman. Wanted nothing to do with the first movie. Yeah, he didn't no, even want to be in it. he hated people telling yeah. him, you yeah. got to play Fred Flintstone. He's like, I don't want to play Fred Flintstone. And I feel like... Yeah, I, you know, he did not want to be there. Yeah, and he's not going to come back for the sequel, and I well, feel like that was not. the reason probably everyone used to get out of doing the sequel. Well, maybe that's why they did it. Did a prequel. They're like, okay, well, Rick... Rick yeah, Rick yeah. Mor- yeah, they grew into John Goodman and Rick Moran. <laughs> Stephen Baldwin, like, shrinking. He, and- he shrunk, yes. like, a foot and a half. And, like, yeah. and Wilma, you know, got a lot shorter mm-hmm. and was played by Elizabeth Perkins. <laughs> Terrible rock accident, like the one that happens to... Yeah, the uh, guy in the Fred movie. Boss in the beginning where he gets crushed. <laughs> yeah, we should mention how there's some fantastical elements in this because it's a cartoon, but it doesn't really go far enough. Mm-hmm. I kind of wanted it to be... It, it's kind of like halfway. It's like there's cartoon sound effects, but... But there's not enough and there's there's weird like things where you'll just see Fred be like a foot tall and like running around in like a fantasy sequence where he's tiny. Did oh no! It's, uh, that? Remember, yeah. they, they embarrass him at a party, and then he kind of shrinks because he feels yeah. Small. And then later in the casino, he does that too. But yeah, um, yeah. On the on the craps table, he's running around. Oh, is he really? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think I missed and that. Then one, at one point, his eyes like pop out of his head, and like it's like a slot machine. Oh right! <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, if we're doing a live action cartoon here, I mean, I feel like let's go for it a little more. Yeah, some of the best style. They do a lot of like uh, Fred walking on his tippy toes and going like, yeah, well, that's a classic. I mean, let's break down what the Flintstones has, right? It's a Honeymooners (laughs) parody, there's rocks. And animals that do things and go, it's a living. That's it. That's it. Um, pretty much, yeah. Oh boy, um, I but like I, it's a beloved uh, franchise. But people so. love it. Yeah, it's yeah. true. If that's the criteria, then this movie does a great job. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Four stars. Ticking all three of those boxes. Yeah, yeah. So for Flintstones fans, they should come away from it thinking this is a great movie. It delivers on everything <laughs> the Flintstones has. Yeah. Um. So so Betty takes in Wilma, um, because she thinks she's you know she's she's down and out. She's she's, she's, she's claiming poverty. Ex- so she exactly. Can get some, some so they move into. Was it Mel Rock plays, Um, which is funny to us because we're currently watching the original Melrose plays. Yeah, (laughs) so uh, it's just nothing. No relationship in this movie is like earned. It's just I agree. It's just like these people are friends now. It happens way too fast. And don't even get me started on when they fall in love with the boys. There's absolutely no reason for them to like these two losers. No. Um, so how does that happen? Well, right, wait, do we get the kazoo stuff? Yeah, we get the kazoo, like, uh, introduces kazoo. himself. Kazoo! It's, it's just like in uh, uh, Green Lantern. Yeah. Like, he crash lands. <laughs> he crash lands in front of the boys, and he's like, oh, I'm here to introduce, or to, you know, witness your Do your you have rituals. powers of any kind? No, nope. I'll be doing nothing in this movie. I'll just be <laughs> floating around. Because you would think that would be, like, a cartoon element, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you like make him Does do have powers. Yeah, but you know, uh, with powers comes comes great cost, uh, and I mean expense, and they don't have the money. Well, at one point, I think he like um, like pushes someone. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's about it. Uh, yeah, so he's like, "Oh, I'm here to observe your mating rituals," and then like, uh, at one scene, like Barney and Fred are in a bunk bed, and Barney falls on top of Fred. It's a big gay panic scene. Yeah, it's like um, it was the year two thousand. No homo, and then they go to the diner. It's like, oh, we gotta, we gotta go out for the get some girls or something to show kazoo. Is that that the only reason they go out to show kazoo? It seems like that's the only reason they go to the diner to pick up girls. Yeah. And Fred doesn't even ask them out. He he doesn't. He just mumbles. And it's like, it's such a weird way to connect these characters. Yeah, it all just comes together. Fred doesn't seem like he has any real drive as a character. Like, I guess he wants to be a quarry man or whatever, but like, he he doesn't have any real wants or needs and it takes him a really, really long time to even be like, oh, I like Wilma. Like, he doesn't give a fuck about her. Yeah, (laughs) it seems like they're kind of forced to to go and like, you know. At at least Barney and Wilma seem to have a bit of chemistry. They, they, Mm -hmm. They, they're vibing off each other. So how do they meet? Meet? Do they meet at the diner? Because they they're the both diner. working there, and there's some some shenanigans. Fred just like falls in love with Betty instantly, and she says, "Oh, you want to go on a date? Like, I'll bring my friends." Yeah, Fred actually likes Betty at first. Yeah, 
switcheroo big twist um i guess and then so they go out on a date yeah but there's no tension there like no. you no. think it's going to be like no. oh they like each other and they switch instantly on their date and they're yeah. fine from then on out yeah that's it there's no like conflict or anything like that i or... will say uh, an issue i have with the first one is that barney and fred are at odds for the entire movie mm-hmm. and i didn't like that in the first flintstones they're not friends and there's kind of this no. s- simmering resentment from uh from barney towards fred yes it, do- right. it does i did it, it does it's conflict though i mean like it's the first one is just so much better written than this Mm -hmm. um in kind of every way Mm. Um, the first one has an amazing cartoon gag where at the end fred flintstone's like i gotta think of something and a thought bubble appears above his head (laughs) and it's a dinosaur eating elizabeth taylor which is completely (laughs) unrelated to what's happening it's a very simpsons like this movie also like (laughs) negates the purpose of that movie because in this movie like you're basically it's about like oh wilma doesn't need wealth and you know power and in the first movie it's all about them Getting money. getting obsessed That's with money right. and becoming yeah. like oh. yeah that 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 destroys their whole life because they get uh, Fred lets all mm-hmm. the the job get to his head and they start buying all the nice cars and everything. Yeah, so um, I'm like, did anyone yeah. did anyone see the first movie? Did, that, yeah, I, I have No, no, that you mean that made this movie? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the guy like directed the friggin' first <laughs> the movie. Same director, so. yeah. Same writer, no. Well, maybe you know, in the time that's uh, uh, happened since this movie and the first movie, they've forgotten. They got brain rot. Yeah. Well, they just forgot. You know, they got they got they got too high on their to, own supply. They got too used to like living. Uh, you know, middle. Like middle I feel income. like this movie, if it was, it had just been called the Flintstones. It could have been like a soft reboot mm-hmm. in two thousand because there really is. There's no ties to that. How about the young Flintstones? It could be Ugh. just <laughs> say, how about Flintstones? It could be so like if they don't get Bay. to Viva Rock Vegas till halfway into the movie. That, so that, like, pissed, that pissed me off for them to get to Viva yeah, Rock Vegas. I was Vegas. the whole movie. I was like, when are they going to Las Vegas? Um, uh, Rock Vegas. Rock Vegas. People. Now I it's like not even a good pun. No, no it's, it's not. I mean, I like the place Las Vegas. I've been there twice. I I as even though uh, to go kind of uh, against what you were saying, Joe, I did like movies about Vegas when I was a kid. Vegas Vacation was like one of my favorite movies and I still love it. Oh, I still love it. It's good. <laughs> I, I I say it's good. Even National Lampoon did not want their name I on know, that one. I know, it's true. But I mean, I, I, I think that movie's hilarious. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not backing down. Um, but yeah, so... You like Casino? That was a big one. I probably, do, do right? love Casino. Yes. Yeah. As a child, did she watched it? That all was the your time. favorite favorite Casino film. <laughs> Daddy, put on Casino. Um, yeah, we get a really terrible Jurassic Park uh, ride joke here. It's like, oh, who'd want to go see dinosaurs? I, oh God! And then uh, yeah, <laughs> we get yeah. Well, they go to the fair. Well, yeah, and there's the lots fi- of um, um, rock stuff. Some flirting. Uh, Fred and Wilma flirt and fall in love. They bowling, bond over bowling, and it's really convoluted. That's such a weird scene. It yeah, is. it gets in like slow motion, mm. and yes. classical music comes on. Yeah, um, and it's like. Why does she like... Bo- she just likes bowling, um, mm-hmm. even though she's never bowled in her life. But you're never going to play when we're married. It's true. It's not like it's something they do together. It's yeah. like they bond over that, but he... Never again. ...doesn't care, and, and you know... Mm. Yeah. And then they get to ride a paper... <laughs> it's like a Ferris wheel made of paper mache. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's, I guess, big bones. And bone. it looks great. And then Dina... I think he wins like a... He wins a, a Dino egg. He wins an egg earlier on in the fair, and then, yeah, Dino was born, so he have like little puppy dino who's kind of cute as a puppet dude puppet baby dino uh, is adorable yeah not so much when he turns to cgi no no um but it's not the worst cgi in the movie the uh, dino right guys uh, <laughs> uh, i don't know the animation's not right. um but yeah uh, i always loved dino uh, uh, uh growing up did you yeah i, I don't know why i like dino <laughs> justin yeah. you're like <laughs> And I grew up at the same time that April did. <laughs> Justin is like furiously writing notes down, like, you know, a psychiatrist. Like, <laughs> you did, did you? I love baby dinosaurs. We- now, April, as a Torontonian, she had a lot of Flintstone if she ever went to Wonderland mm-hmm. because they had a lot of walk around characters and oh, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, That's there was right. Flintstone stuff there. And also, when we were talking about the McDonald's thing, there was a huge like tie in right like when the first movie came out i remember oh, yeah. like mcdonald's like of, like happy meals and stuff. yeah 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 all kinds of stuff like that um yeah but you know now what we get uh, uh 
something that would remind you of the Flintstones, uh, a new Radicals uh, montage. I could not believe that they played the new Radicals. <laughs> it, and it's not even a rock pun. What are we doing? I don't know. I guess it was 2000. Right? Yes, so. the song was hot. So they put it in the movie, sure. but it felt so out of place. Yeah, it's very strange. Is this storing like the montage of them? Yeah, yeah. I think they're like Falling water skiing or something. That like that's what's in my brain. Do they water? Also, ski? the know. the men's bathing suits in this world, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. Well, all the men are wearing dresses. They're um, all like their bathing. The men's bathing suits are like dresses. Yes. The women have bikinis, of course, because <laughs> but gotta, like the, I don't. It's such daddy. a weird. Yeah. Well, it, why are like half the people Neanderthals? Neanderthals. Okay, yeah. So all like the like service workers are cavemen and women and um uh, the our, our actors are, you know, regular people. Yeah, it's it's What's really, up with that? I, I don't know. Was that something in the first movie? I don't I remember the in the first movie the team they're playing in bowling mm-hmm. is made up of all. Or there might be just like there is a couple of them, but in this movie it's like a very weird they look like the Geico. Yes, yeah, they do. Yeah, they have the they big do. Forehead. But is that supposed to be like another race or? Um, I, just, I think I they're know. supposed to be Neander uh, Neanderthal. <laughs> I can't say the word Neanderthal. Yeah, but like there you go. So, so did Neanderthals and regular humans coexist? I guess like they co-evolved. They, or they something? split. Yeah, yeah. They share a common ancestor. <laughs> so it's all the dummies. Like I don't know. Do menial second class uh, citizens? And yeah. we also yeah. have yeah. dinosaurs and humans. So needless to say, this movie's not historically accurate. I wouldn't um, think so. <laughs> <laughs> They're back, by the way. The Geico cavemen are. Is are it, they really? Is it new commercials? Yeah, I don't know if you've if you've gotten those ads in Canada yet, but they're they're back here in the states. No, we don't really watch. It's like commercials. they they had that stick they had that sitcom and that kind of retired them. Yeah, and enough time has passed now. They're like, oh, let's bring them back. Did you do a wow. video on that 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 sitcom? I did. Okay, I was yeah. like, was that you? Because I definitely that was watched. such a horrible disaster that show because they oh they essentially God. shot like a pilot that took place in the deep south where people complained that the cavemen were like an allegory for modern race relations oh my and God. it just it yeah, went through it several horrible. iterations right yeah how many yeah. episodes did they do oh. it's like less than 10 i feel like <laughs> yeah like total um <laughs> oh my god yeah uh <laughs> i can't believe they're back why can't the lizard get a commercial he sh- or a sitcom <laughs> a little geico lizard <laughs> the geico lizard yeah too much cg yeah, I guess. Although they did do Father of the Pride. Oh, Speaking Jesus. of Vegas, guys, I watched that. Speaking of John oh, that Goodman. Was, that was John Goodman, yeah. yeah. John, why? Why did I watch it? I don't know. I thought it was funny at the time. Were Siegfried and Roy characters on that? Yes. Too? Yes, because yes. they're, they're tigers. And that's kind of a big reason, I think, why it got canceled. But that show famously came out after one of them was attacked by a yeah. tiger. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it was Roy. So th- that was a show that was like plagued Like it came out like, controversy. it feels like a week or two after he was mauled. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but for whatever reason, I liked it. <laughs> well, there you go. I think it was in like grade four or five at the time. Oh, I thought you had watched it like a couple weeks ago or something like no, that. No, no, I mean when it aired. <laughs> when when it Friday aired. Out. Yeah, yeah, when she was like in between watches of Casino, uh, mm. when she was a child, <laughs> she watched Father with Pride. Um, so now we go to Wilma's house. She invites everybody over for some big dinner. Fancy party. <clears throat> they realize she's stinking rich. Yeah, uh, and uh, Betty is, um, you know, rightly upset because she's like, um, you you deceived me and you pretended like you were poor and I took you in and I'm probably paying your rent. And But they get over that pretty much immediately. Like, yeah. it's, This feels like which should have been the main conflict of the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things that like, should have been the main conflict. It, this really does feel like two movies jammed into one yes like this vegas stuff and then like oh a prequel about how they met and wilma lied about who she was but they all overcome that and then get along like I, it's just i don't know it's such a, a strange marriage of these two movies it feels like yeah but these two movies where it's like the the story has been done a million times yeah and, it's like, very cliche it's but it's so like oh it's like, kind of keeps jumping from one cliched plot contrivance to another that yeah that you've seen like a you million times you know exactly time. where like, it's oh, going like oh her parents are rich and they don't like fred because he's low class yeah, like it's, it's like, like king oh, of God. king of queens or you were saying like Anything. it's like family guy yeah family guy is like the exact same thing <laughs> all the classics king of queens <laughs> family guy <laughs> the two, family two guy. shows i hate we so. do get a funny uh, cameo by john cho here as like a valet john cho oh, he looks very angry <laughs> 
he looks exactly the same. I was expecting him to be much, much younger. But like I said, it's the same year he was in American Pie. I guess. So. Well, I guess he has an age. Kristen, Kristen Stewart, by the way, uh, was a, is in, in the carnival scene okay. as Ring Toss Girl. I, we saw her oh, name shit. in the credits, but I didn't yeah. see, I forgot to look for her. So a very, yeah, very young. In the young. carnival when they're throwing, again, this is a weird scene, the the, the goal for them to toss at the ring thing is just the Neanderthal guys. So yeah. they're being used as props. <laughs> oh, Again, God. like that's like awful. Like you could just replace them with like a tree stump or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's we, not nice. We're introduced to Harmy Corman, who's... Uh, Harmy Corman? <laughs> oh, sorry, Harvey. I was like, Harmony Corrine? Ooh. <laughs> Harvey. By the way, I can't be sure that Harvey Corman is acting or he's just that confused. No. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know where he is. He's an older man. For a second, I was like, is that Rip Torn? <laughs> He's really doing a different role. Yeah. No, he thought he was in a liquor store. <laughs> yeah. He thought he was in a liquor store, but he was on the set of Flintstones. He was, he was breaking into yeah. a bank and thought he was at his house. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but I remember hearing Bryant Levant talking about this part was originally Seymour Cassell. Wow. Oh and my God. they actually mm-hmm. got him on set and it wasn't working out. Really? And they recasted it during production. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. And so uh, then they were probably like, well, Harvey Corman, you know, was in the first one. Maybe he could pull a favor, kind of, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was, he was uh, really big. He liked using, like, even uh, in the first movie, Jonathan Winters has a, yeah. a small part. Like, he liked a lot of these older character comedy character actors and he put them he puts them in a lot of movies and stuff so that's always nice to see but Mm -hmm. i think yeah harvey corman works it's it's a fun little performance from him yeah for sure he's He's a funny character who i guess has alzheimer's and he doesn't really know where he is and he's he should be in a home he's kind of like (laughs) uh, make him do he thinks he's a soldier or he is a soldier or maybe he was uh, yeah it's like it's it's one of those characters it's kind of funny though like his playing off of Joan Collins and also Joan Collins is great in this she's she is, she is just hamming it up and and and, and really it's the a big performance in a movie of medium to big performances but you need a big performance in this movie yeah I think she's pretty good I mean I didn't see the original so I don't know I remember Elizabeth Taylor being good in the first one was she in much of the first movie no or? Um, I think she was she was a, like a main character yeah, she gets like three scenes I feel like yeah. okay yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, you yeah, know, Joan Collins is pretty good. So it's like, as prequels do, Wilma gets her pearls, her famous pearls from the dad, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, what else could we... Uh, so we found out where Dino comes from, yeah. where the pearls come from. <laughs> I guess the cigarettes would be the next one. <laughs> <laughs> just a feels barn. Ah, let them go down real smooth. Well, I mean, uh, let me just say, there's a lot of things that I actually liked about this movie, mm-hmm. but uh, I have to pick my favorite thing, and it's... I know, it's so difficult to pick your favorite thing. <laughs> I, I, I'm not joking. There were all, actually multiple things I liked. I already said I liked Dino, but I'm going to go with the giant martini glasses oh my god colin is drinking a martini right now <laughs> and um if we had martini glasses that big i mean have you guys ever been to vegas yes. and gotten like those gigantic uh, glasses no. of alcohol you can get and just walk around a the, the biggest the biggest we got were those big Ugh. slushies and and we, yeah. they were on like i thought i was going to die I yeah had one of those <laughs> yeah too. yeah were, and on uh, fremont street right and we're like well we, you got to get the regular size the regular size is like the size of like two pint glasses yeah, it's combined. Gigantic. It's your, your hand can't but those even are get like mixed it. drinks, aren't they? Yes. It's like yeah, margaritas mixed. and stuff. A martini would just be pure, <laughs> pure alcohol, vodka, basically. But then you yeah. order, you yeah. can order these things, and then get extra booze put into them, so they dump like a whole bunch of shots into. Yeah, them. Yeah, they're like, you want the extra and shot, and we, we all got gosh. fucked up. I think we had like five <laughs> sips, and then we just threw it in the. Oh garbage. yeah, I couldn't finish mine because <laughs> like, I love slushies. That they're kind of like my thing, but it's like it's so much sugar and then alcohol. But yeah, the giant martini glasses in this are comical, and I love them. They're like. The, they're bigger than your head. Like, remember when we did um, that uh, Bee Gees movie, um, the Beatles Bee Gees movie, Sergeant Peppers? Yeah. There was like a funny joke in that where the glasses keep getting bigger. It's like that big. <laughs> okay. Like, it's like you have to hold it into it. And then when they go to Vegas later, they have them again, which makes sense because of what you, you guys were saying about Vegas. So why are they in this scene too? That's bad. It should have just been Do you think it was like Vegas. a prop mistake? Like <laughs> yes. in Spinal Tap, they came the wrong size and they were like, <laughs> oh too shit, we, got, we just got to use them. I said this is the Flintstones inches. joke, right? You think they're big? Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh God, we're, we're really cutting it close budget-wise on this $83 million well, picture, so we're just going to have to roll with it. Let's roll. So yeah. we are finally in this movie getting to Las Vegas. <laughs> going their well, trip. It's, it said that Greg um, uh, owns a casino? Yeah, he's he really wants to to 
get it on with Wilma and like, you know, Fred kind of steals her away. So he invites them all down to his casino in Vegas. The tar dust. And I, <laughs> the t- oh, oh shit. I did not and catch I knew, that. I knew exactly where the plot was going. I'm like, he's going to get Fred into debt. And the only way he's going to get out is to like give up Wilma, blah, blah, blah. No, he's got the, he just had to reverse the switch. The big comical win, lose switch. That's how <laughs> casinos work. Yeah. No. They pull a giant switch. Yeah. It, that was kind of funny. Somehow. Like the audacity of it that he can control. But I mean, obviously, Greg doesn't really like Wilma. He just wants her money because. Right. That's right, because there's some bookies that are after him. Yeah. Right. He, so he has to be titular evil character. Right. Um, bookies played by. These bookies uh, are like Looney Tunes characters. They are. They're like. Yeah. There's the tall guy and the short guy. Danny Woodburn and. Uh, yeah, some his, guy who looks like a his wrestler. Henchman, I guess. They uh, have funny names. I don't know what they are. It's like Big Man and Little Man or something. I don't know. But yeah, this is where uh, we get... Danny them. Woodburn is Little Rocco, <laughs> and the other one is Big Rocco. I was so. right. <laughs> Little Rocco. Yeah, those are funny names. Um, great to see uh, Danny Woodburn like in anything. And he's again, he's another actor who's just like always good. He can't be bad. Yeah. He's just... Hey, Phil- Philadelphia's own. Oh, really? Yeah, he's from Philadelphia. That's... Oh, he was in That's Jingle awesome. All the Way. Oh, yeah, yes, that's right. that's right. When they go to the he's, like uh, he's, house full of elves, he's like, no uh, refunds. He's yeah. one of the elves. And I mean, I, I, I lost my shit when I saw him in uh, Watchmen, uh, which I, I watched not oh, too yeah, long ago for the leader. first time. And I was just like, man, he's so good. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, he should, you know, he should be in as many roles as Peter Dinklage is these days. Um, but uh, like, I, I don't know. Agreed. He's one of my, uh, one of my favorite like uh, Seinfeld guest stars, I would say for sure. Um, so now we're we're in Vegas. Uh, we forgot to mention that Fred wants to propose to Wilma, so he, he bought a ring. And then when he realizes that she's from a rich family, he's like, "Oh, this ring ain't gonna be good." Who, enough. who is it tell, that tells him like, "You can't give her that ring"? It's, it's it's probably Barney. Was it Barney? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So he he's like, "Okay, we'll go to Vegas and gamble, and I'll win lots of money, and then I can buy her a huge big ring." Even though you know Wilma's made it clear that she doesn't care about money, yeah. but yeah. And Barney has no plot in this movie, no. other than like. No. He spills something on a woman, Ugh. and then Betty sees him just cleaning her up, and she's like, "Oh God!" It's a mis- I can't yeah, instead of ta- instead of talking about it, she just instantly assumes, you know, the, the worst. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's just I kind. I also love that there's he's sitting out there on this like patio, and a, a, a the largest pie you've ever seen in the movie. <laughs> yes, comes walking through the frame, and it's like, well, uh, yeah, this this can't end well. You know where it's going, um, but I do like that he's like. So Barney's thing is also he eats a lot of food. I mean, that was that a thing? I don't know, but he like is actually. I like, mean, he needs to fill that cocoa pebbles uh, yeah. hole in his heart that he can never have. <laughs> Why doesn't Fred give Barney cocoa pebbles? I don't know. I don't know. It's what like, in what? the in the commercials. Yeah, because that's the basis, isn't it? Or is it Fred wants? Who wants sure the cocoa? Yeah, I think I think Fred wants them, and Barney doesn't give them to him because uh, it's always Barney, my pebbles. <laughs> okay. Wait, Fred. Yeah, Barney's a friggin' freeloader pebbles. on Fred. <laughs> uh, also, in that in this universe, is that are they legitimately like rocks that they're eating? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's rock cereal. It's rock candy. They do have rock candy in this somewhere. I forget where. Um, oh God, I'm sorry. I'm looking at a hideous CGI animated uh, Fred Flintstones from a new Cocoa Pebbles ad. Oh God, mm-hmm. why? There was Did like you still eat that. That's like pure sugar. Wasn't there a newer like Flintstones like cartoon? Oh Jesus, I'm just looking at this thing. No, I don't think so. Yeah, why is this? Yeah, the like... image I sent looks like he's just eating a turd. Joe, I'm gonna send you. Th- <laughs> send you this because you have to be part of the uh the 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 image the uh, image gotcha. ring that's going that goes around on our podcast why now. is his tongue his tongue looks hairy Ew. okay i'm sending <laughs> it right now <laughs> through twitter oh, i'm just seeing kirsten did you guys ever eat cocoa pellet pebbles no, i, I always wanted so. to but my mom had like a no sugar cereal thing but then i i could eat honey nut cheer, uh, cereal and captain crunch would probably had as much sugar as cocoa pebbles yeah, I mean, we've, we've had the cereal conversation before. Um, yeah, we, we weren't really allowed to get, like, sugary cereal unless, like, uh, we were camping and it was a treat. But I would just put sugar in, like, my Cheerios or Oat mm-hmm. Bran or <laughs> Raisin Bran. Ugh. Okay, Joe, are you seeing this picture? I, this is, yeah, this is stunning. <laughs> Hideous. Oh and I checked, God. yeah, that is... Actually, what is on his it, tongue? He looks like he has a disease. It says gluten. It says gluten free on the cocoa pebbles box. Oh God. Uh, 
All right. You know what so I'm really to- thankful for that we never got a live action Jetsons movie starring oh, Tim Allen because I feel like that was it, so that was on the Rodriguez. cusp of happening. Yeah. yeah, that totally could have happened. I can envision it right now. <laughs> I feel like it's been threatened like every few years. It, it, it sort a of Jetsons? comes up. Oh, a Jetsons. I also movie. watched that as as a kid. Um, hmm. I always preferred the Flintstones though. I don't know Jetsons always felt a, a, a little more George lame. Jetson is a bad man. <laughs> Why? What did he do? I don't know. He's just always screaming at his wife and stuff like that. <laughs> God. Uh, and you know the story of the Jetsons, right? That they destroyed the Earth, which is why they're all living in the sky, uh, as the poor people live below. Is that, is that the truth? Yeah. Or is that just That's like a, a truth canonical? Is that yeah. the internet theory, or is that just is that actually what it was? And they I think the you're confusing made. it with the Jeffersons, because they're moving on. Oh, up, right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the Jetfersons. <laughs> So wait, we're at the casino. Uh, where are we now? Well, uh, Fred gets obsessed by gambling, you know, money, and he's like winning. He's, he's and winning. winning and winning. I mean, who wouldn't? Greg do that? is letting him like win all this cash, and you know, it's, he's coming for a fall pretty soon. So like, Barney gets led off to like this thing. Betty sees him like fondling this woman after he. It is kind of a funny gag yeah. where he's trying to clean up the you know the the banana cream pie sure. on her on her boobs and she sees it. I guess from far away. Yeah. It, well, the the look on Stephen Baldwin's face as he's like wiping it off of her it is ridiculous. It's whatever, and she she you know starts crying and runs off and bumps into uh, Mick Jagged. Who we did not recognize it for at first. I was like, "Is that Steve Coogan?" And uh, <laughs> I thought the same thing for a couple seconds at the right. beginning. And then I was like, "No, I think it's Alan Cumming with like a fake nose and maybe a fake chin." And Colin didn't believe me. We had to yep, look it up. It. <laughs> yeah, we looked it up, but is yeah, he kind of does this smirk, and I'm like, oh, "Okay, now I can't not see Alan Cumming." But I don't know. It's a pretty funny performance. I, I kind of like I, it. I th- yeah. I was gonna say. It's just the, the fact that the Rolling Stones, this had to be the genesis of this screenplay. Yeah. yeah. How do we get the Rolling Stones? So they just play the In the Flintstones the world, yeah. Um, but I like it when British people like exaggerate their own British accent because who can make fun of the British better than British people? It's sure. it's 100% true. And he's doing this ridiculous, like, like it's not even a Mick Jagger at a certain point. It's not really. Like <laughs> it's it's pretty funny. But he um, has like the mannerisms that Mick Jagger yeah, does, especially when they get in a fight later. Yeah, he's always like looking in the mirror at himself and stuff. I don't know. It's like pretty funny. He's so, strutting around. Yeah, you know. he, he kind of like, you know, uh, uh, grabs Betty and takes her along and blah, blah, blah. So it's like this big jealousy thing between him and Barney. And it, it's and so tired. Barney. It's so I know. like... And every, it's all, kind of like, it's like in the, in the background. It's like the movie doesn't even have time for this little plot. It's, it's like, like, this is happening, but we're, we're more focused on the Wilma and Fred stuff. Every part of this story is just tired and like been there, done that. Like so many. Also, I, I, I forgot to mention that when they check into their like hotel room, there is what looks like a water slide in it. Yeah. But yes. it's not sloped or anything. <laughs> no. It's just like a toilet bowl in the center of the room. <laughs> And like Barney runs and die. It's like, what is this? It, I think even like per- I think in the center it was supposed to be a hot tub. I guess, but it's like it takes up like a <laughs> half the room. Yeah, it's like a big spiral, and he seems to get down it somehow. But he looks like he's just being pulled on wires <laughs> for some reason. I, <laughs> yeah, there's no way he should it, be. How would you ever had in. one of those big uh, toilet? Slides in your Las Vegas hotel room? Well, I've never been to like one of those big fancy rooms, so maybe that's just what they have. Maybe that's what they have. And Viva Mm -hmm. Rock Vegas, they do. Hey, I stayed at the MGM Grand in the William Freakin's Jade Room. Thank you very much. Are you you? serious? Yes. Is that what they actually called it? The MGM Grand, every hotel room was themed to something. Oh my God, that is amazing. So they would have props from the movie Jade. Oh my God, that's so cool. (laughs) Although we watched Jade recently. Not a very good movie, um, oh. but no. Uh, but I didn't get to pick. I didn't say like, show me the Jade Room. It's you get a random. I so that's still hilarious. Think that's so cool. So was it just like, did it have like William Friedkin in like a glass case and like? I he, think it had like a knife. He tells he tells these like stories. Oh my god, Colin! Oof. Next time we got to go to stay in the William MGM Grand. Freakin, we have to stay in the yourself. MGM Grand. Like I, I think, think they uh, may have I remodeled. think Roadhouse is an MGM movie. Was there yeah. a uh, Ooh, a Roadhouse a Roadhouse room? room? There is definitely an MGM a Roadhouse room. Oh my god, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. It's not themed like it. It's not like, ooh, look, it's like the set of <laughs> Roadhouse. Like it's, it's just like there's a glass thing in the middle of the room, and there's just like a prop from the movie. And it's just like Ben Gazzara shows up and blows your room up. <laughs> oh, no. And then runs you over the That's monster still truck. cool. I don't know. I'd oh, I would like the Roadhouse room, please. No problem. Here's the pants that Jake Gyllenhaal wrote. No! <laughs> here's uh, here's your host, Connor McGregor. Shirts, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's in the room with you. We can't get him to leave. <laughs> How are you doing? When are you getting some food? I'm hungry. Tune in next week to hear us talk about Roadhouse on the Patreon. Um, <laughs> oh. But back to Viva Rock Vegas. Um, so, <laughs> You've been listening to us talk about Viva uh, Rock Vegas. Yeah, so, so, yeah, there's they, a lot of like the, uh, uh, what's his name? Cliff, um, Greg. He has this whole plot going on where he's like, I have to uh, get money to these creditors, these gangsters. So mm. how am I going to get it? Uh, he can't get it out of Fred because Fred doesn't have any money. So he's like, I'm going to marry Wilma and, yeah. I'll, and I'll convince them so, that I'm going to marry Rich. Yeah. So he frames Fred for stealing Wilma's. It's the same plot as the first movie, just done like way lazy. It's, it's, it's very similar. It, yeah. It, it, it's real, yeah. It's like Fred being set up as the fall guy by a villain mm-hmm. who and the money's involved. Mm-hmm. God, I wish it was Cobb McLaughlin, though. Oh, I know, yeah. and I mean, I like Greg, but like he's kind of like even the voice. He's like doing that same character, and then this time we don't have Halle Berry secretary. You know, mm. we have am I uh, someone? Am else. I the only one when I see Alan Cummings show up in a movie? I go, oh, it's not Paul <laughs> Rubens. <laughs> Which is a joke in a recent movie, which was Paul Rubin's last role. Uh, it's a Sandra O oh movie where a character loves uh, Alan Cummings. Yeah. And she's like, there he is. And it's Paul Rubin. He's like, I'll pretend to be Alan Cummings. It happens all the time. Do they really look that similar? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's a joke in a movie. Okay. Quiz Lady. That's a movie that the joke I, is I, in. I think he looks more like Steve Coogan, personally. Um, yeah, I do, too. Yeah, and I also love Steve Coogan. And I love Paul Rubens, too. They're all, and Alan Cumming. They're all great. But as I was saying before, Alan Cumming did a lot of bad movies. And, like, mm-hmm. yeah, he should fire his agent. Hey, he's on that uh, new TV show, The Traitors. That's, oh, he's hosting that. Yeah, yeah fuck. <laughs> Get some I of haven't that. seen that. Get but, some of that um, hosting money. Uh, it looks bad. Uh, so yeah, um, Fred and Barney just hijinks. They dress up as showgirls. Fred sings a song, which is fucking horrible. Do you guys want to talk about, um, dinosaur guy? What? Um, the guy who was in the mask who gets up and is like, I have something to confess. I poisoned all the oh, dinosaurs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Kind of funny, right? It is kind of funny. It's a pretty funny. And scene. I love that. I kind of like that they do a callback to it and, uh, yeah the very end scene. I think it was Greg who gets up because he kind of frames Fred for stealing the pearl necklace and he's like, does anyone have anything to confess? And people start confessing wildly inappropriate things and he says like, I poisoned the dinosaur's water supply. <laughs> They're going to be dead in a year. Doesn't anyone care? And everyone goes, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I laughed. Come on, let's let's give this movie a credit where it I can't deserve. laugh. That's making uh, jokes out of a terrible thing, yeah. a genocide. Wait, doesn't this, this the same thing happen in Titanic? Isn't like Jack framed for stealing roses? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh my god, diamond or something. Oh my god, the heart of the ocean, whatever. Yeah. Yes. No, and and it happens exactly the same way. They, they slip it in his pocket. I was I was thinking of Trading Places where they do that, but they do it in Titanic. Oh, Trading Places, the exact same thing yeah. in Titanic. Yeah. yeah, good call. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, well, so they ripped off James Cameron too for this god movie. God damn it, this movie. It doesn't have an original bone in its body. Uh, bone? An original bone? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Um, yeah, my only note is just, this song sucks. Oh, the song <laughs> he sings? So bad. Yeah. How badly do you think they tried to get like hard rock casino involved? Oh, it was so bad. Oh, I would have loved that. Yeah, that would have made Wait, sense. Wait, the first Flintstones movie cost $46 million? What? How? It was six years earlier, money, inflation. Well, I'm, I'm thinking that's probably like, what, 94? Um, you oh, know, oh I think Jurassic God. Park only cost like $60 million or but something. Had- and they didn't have Stephen Baldwin. You know, <laughs> yeah. He does demand exactly. I was a large good salary. Man yeah. who has done nothing wrong. Well, they probably, I mean, it's 94, so they probably didn't have a lot of CG uh, at that point. It's just like, you know. Oh, odd- you know why this movie looks cheap? Wasn't shot by Mr. Dean Kundi. Oh, that's Dean right. Kundi. Um, also, has Stephen Baldwin ever been in anything good? Has he ever been good? Um, uh, help me. Yes, he's in something good. Uh, <laughs> Biodome. <laughs> no. No. That movie's gr- that movie rules. <laughs> Uh, let me I'm, I'm see struggling. here. I don't know if I've ever even seen him in anything. Yeah, that's right. He's in The Usual Suspects. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. He's also in Casualties of War. Uh, he's that. also in Half-Baked, a film where every cast member now leads a cursed existence. I don't oh, remember boy. him being in Half-Baked. Uh, oh, wait. Dave Chappelle, Was Jim Brewer. Was he one of the Lund. four guys? No, no I don't okay. think so. Um, Isn't he in your uh, holiday movie, Fred Claus? Yes, you guys he talk is. About? Oh, God. Yeah. He, he plays is. himself. He shows up in the, the support group oh, for Famous Brothers. Oh, that's right. He's also in Born on the Fourth of July, the Oliver Stone Tom Cruise movie. He's probably the second 
the second tier Baldwin, right? Yeah. So first tier them. Daniel, second tier Stephen, third tier Alec, right? <laughs> Wait, what is about Daniel Billy? The one, who's the? In, yeah, there's. I was gonna say there's a who's fourth in one. vampires. That's Daniel. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the one who kind of looks like Alec. He kind of looks like Alec, but he's like yeah. bigger and like heavier. They all look like like you photocopied. One <laughs> yes. <of them. laughs> well, Stephen Baldwin looks like if you photocopied like if the photocopier kind of broke halfway through and yes. and yeah, and then by the end of it, it's just a just some weird. What is thing. Billy Baldwin in? Is he like the older one? No, he was in Backdraft. He was like the youngest one. He's right. He's also in Sliver. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and uh, he's the one that in the shadow, Alec Baldwin looks like Billy Baldwin when he puts on the shadow. <laughs> Uh-huh. Mask. It looks like Billy Baldwin. <laughs> it's kind of like that, like evolution chart. You could put them all together into like <laughs> they're evolving. Yeah, Stephen. Yeah. Stephen doesn't look like really any one of them. He looks like he got the yes, worst of all of them. I can and see don't it. get I confused. The guy in Firefly is not a Baldwin. I know. Adam, official Adam Baldwin. The Adam Baldwin, who's also in Predator Two. The yeah, fake and neither Baldwin. is oh, the star gosh. of Phantasm. <laughs> He's uh, not a Baldwin as well either. Is his name Baldwin though? It is Baldwin. Yeah, I mean it's kind of a famous, uh, popular name. Um, so uh, yeah, that's why I'll be naming my child Baldwin de Clue, <laughs> <laughs> just in case they get confused. Baldwin. St- do you do you remember? There's a scene in this movie where they're in the jail cell, and Kazoo comes in and like projects a scene that happened earlier. Yes. For, for it's like it was the movie that convoluted at that point they're like we we can't connect these dots logistically yeah let's just have them watch a scene from earlier in the movie they have no uh faith in their audience clearly. well i don't know it's it's like kazoo wasn't there it's just, he he just it's they're like how can we give them motivation to get out of this jail cell let's show them a scene that took place earlier. I, I wish kazoo had more fourth wall breaking stuff in this movie because it starts with him seeing the universal logo mm-hmm. and he's like oh do you see that logo and then showing a flashback, but like do more stuff, like realize you're in a movie, play jokes like that. Yeah, there's some fourth wall uh, stuff in this movie, but nowhere near enough. And also, Kazoo uh, disappears for like 45 minutes. He's ah. a very expensive effect. Yeah, I mean, I was happy with it because I don't <laughs> like him, but it's kind of just like, oh, right, this. Like, and, and then he's like, oh, I'm, I'm studying, you know, mating rituals. It, it goes away and then it comes back at like kind of the end. And yeah, he kind of helps them break out of the jail cell. It was kind of funny that Stephen, uh, sorry, Barney is like, oh, I can just walk through the bars. I mean, I kind of laughed. I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, I'm clearly the, the dumb dumb. Uh, in this episode. I'll do, I'll, I'll, that's my favorite thing, I guess, Barney walking through the bars. I got nothing. We're at the end of the movie. Sure. Joe, you got to pick one too. <laughs> We're almost there. Going to have to be uh, Mr. Mark Addy here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You love Mark Addy. In general. What? Nobody likes the Anne Margaret version of Viva She's so old. Homer. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, homie. It's also like after all the, all of like the the plot resolves. So it's like Chip is out there dancing with. (laughs) It just—it doesn't make any sense from a like. Why are we ending the movie with all these characters together? Um, Wait, is that before or after the wedding? I think this is um, after the wedding. There's no, like a no. big conga I think line. It's before because they don't they have a big like dance sequence outside of the casino. That's after the wedding. They get married in the casino. And then go back to the casino. Yeah, oh, I guess okay. they get married in Vegas. I mean, I, don't know. I actually liked that big choreographed dance scene um, because. The whole movie felt kind of small, especially mm-hmm. when you're in these casino sets and you're like, oh, like it feels kind of, you know, s- small in scope. But then they get a whole bunch of extras. They have dancers and our cast is actually doing a choreographed dance. It felt like a, you know, a music. Mark Addy was like, get out of my way. I got this one. And then he like rips all his clothes off. Like, <laughs> Mark, <Monty>. no! <laughs> Wrong movie. Oh, now you're on a list. Uh, <laughs> I hope there won't be a full Monty 2 coming soon to Disney Plus in a limited series. Oh, God. Are you, you're no. joking, but I, I, it could be real. No, it exists. Yeah, I'm joking. It's, it's real. It's out, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's already out. There was a problem, too. One of the actors got fired for some kind of assault <laughs> allegations oh, oh or something. Oh, God. Christ. Yeah, it came out in and I think I think Tom Wilkinson, uh, one of his last things he did oh. is that. Is he oh. in the original? Dear God. I think he is. Mm. Uh, I've never actually wow. seen the full Monty. It's eight episodes long. Do you think you need to spend eight hours with the full Monty guys? Was this um, like no. after the movie and it's them like, you know, they're, yeah, they're yeah. busy. It's a classic like uh, train spotting too. They're like uh, stripping business has failed. It's the fuller Monty. Yeah. <laughs> it's about uh, they navigate Sheffield and it's crumbling healthcare, education and employment. Oh, sectors. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, I don't want to see this. Um, but anyway, uh, so the movie's over, right? Uh, uh, they get yeah. married. They have a conga Viva line. Viva Rock Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Fred and Wilma get married. They realize they don't need money. Um, uh, Everybody bursts into the Flintstones song at the uh, wedding. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. Which is, uh, and that's uh, uh, Hanna Barbera in that scene, by oh, the way. Oh, that's yep. right. I yeah. figured that we yeah. cut the two old men at one point who hate each other. Men. They hated each other by this point. They were probably a lot. filmed separately. <laughs> yeah, they CG'd them in. That was like forty million dollars of the budget right there. <laughs> <laughs> CGing Hanna and Barbera. Yeah, they yeah. do. They do um, the conga line. Uh, get out, say. Mick, Mick Jagged is back to sing uh, "Viva Rock Vegas." Oh, right. It's like yeah, even like the villains come back and they're with everyone. Everyone's having a good yeah. time. Everything's all. all sp- I feel like kids' movies around this time used to all end this way. Yes. There'd be like a big musical number. Well, that's uh, Shrek-ific- Shrekification. <laughs> that <true>. like, <laughs> but Shrek. Even was though Shrek, Shrek after came this, out in two thousand one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, no, you're but like right. every animated film would be like, <laughs> you got to move it, move it. And it's like Garfield and like Odie. You got to move it, move it, I think is from um, Ice Age, right? Uh, I don't know. Madagascar. Wait, okay. no, Madagascar. I, I, I never remember. <laughs> what is, um, it's Marmaduke. It's like what I like about you, I think, when they're all dancing yeah. at the end. <laughs> what I like about uh, you. Previous yeah. episode. Uh, Oh, yeah. Um, One of Justin's favorites, the Three Stooges movie, ends uh, with a with a musical number too. Mm-hmm. Oh, does it? I don't remember. Over the end credits, yeah. There's uh, I forget the he song, but remember. it's like, it's yeah. That was laughing too hard. By the time I hit the end credits, <laughs> he was, he was like, too busy wiping was tears away from his face. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, but, oh, we gotta do the Garfield movie on this. There's two of them too. He goes uh, to Paris, I think, oh, in the second God. one. Well, there's a new one coming out. Uh, oh yes. yeah, directed by the guy who did Chicken Little and Emperor's New Groove. Oh, oh shit. Um, Colin, did you say your favorite thing? I did. I liked the uh, remote control that Chip <laughs> does. He pushes the button. It wasn't the Brian Seltzer saw. <laughs> <laughs> it's Seltzer for Setzer. God's sake. Um, Seltzer. And, and as previously said, I like Dino. Um, so I get two favorite things for this episode. Sure. Closing thoughts on uh, this movie. Well, yeah. don't make me watch it again. <laughs> I didn't hate it, guys. No, I, didn't, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. It's just the story is so lame. Okay, how about this? Since we have Joe on, better or worse than Baby's Day Out? Worse. Yeah, I go worse. Uh, I would also say worse. Uh, Call it. Maybe. Come on now. Okay. How about you, April? What do you think? I'm going to go even. I'm, I'm waffling. <laughs> I think I, I think might go even. even. Yeah, because Baby's Day Out does have a lot of good stuff too. You know, you got the three guys. The three, <laughs> wait, the three wait, wait. guys. What, what is the good stuff? <laughs> you got the Viva three. Rock Vegas. Well, as, as I've said, I, I've said, you know, there's jokes that I laughed at. You know, I like mm-hmm. Mick Jagged. I like the practical effects. I like uh, Jane Krakowski. Um, I like uh, Dino. And, all I, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. all, all I'm thinking of is like, I'm thinking back to Baby's Day Out and I'm just thinking of the mom scenes. I'm like, ugh. ugh they're awful. There was, uh, Baby's just Day Out rotten. felt longer. <laughs> It did. It yeah. was. It was uh, 100 Definitely minutes. Did. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah this uh, 130, clean hour and a half. Uh, 90 minutes. I meant 130. Um, it's this one like, it just yeah. dragged itself yeah. over the 90 minute mark. Like it's yeah. like 90 ish. And also, is it just me or did the credits seem like insanely long? <laughs> I I hit I hit off as soon as the, as soon as I saw cast. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I was I was out. Yeah, you want to see if there was any bloops, Joe, that happened of them having fun on set? Yeah. No, I watched the behind the scenes making of. It's so it's also really funny to watch whenever there's a like a wide shot in the filming of this movie. They have like sandals on. Yes. Really. So I'm wondering whose job it was to coordinate who would collect the sandals when it was going to go back to a farther back shot. <laughs> Wait, is it a thing that they're supposed to be barefoot? In- yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. They're yeah. always oh. barefoot. They're not they have Christ in- and his disciples. They're, uh, you, know. Hey, you know what they didn't do in this movie that they do in the first, uh, the walking, you know, through the, the car. They did. They do. They, they do it at the beginning oh, with the they? cross a bridge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I might've been uh, making a drink or something. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, um, Viva Rock Vegas. It's available on iTunes. Um, Don't buy it guys. Well, oh. Come on. Joe, did you get the Blu-ray? <laughs> No, I had already had a, a DVD combo of this Ooh. and the first one. So, one of those one of those great discs that you have to flip. Yeah. To, oh no! And I, that and one, I always uh, do it the wrong way. <laughs> that one has a 
double discs like that have a tendency to have disc rot. So enjoy those special ah. features while you can. <laughs> oh. Glad I saw it. Yes, um, and yeah, I'm also I'm I'm glad I'm glad I watched this. I, I enjoy it, and if anything, uh, it's 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 gonna inspire me to go back and re- revisit the original, and I'll appreciate it. I'm sure a lot. More. And you have to make Colin watch it. Yeah, oh, I yeah. Will. Okay, I'll, I, abso- I'll, I absolutely will. I'll definitely join. <laughs> yeah, but although I feel like I've already seen everything. Yeah, but you know, you haven't. Um, the full frontal nudity will really strike you as a oh, surprise. Yeah, oh, exactly. that's the like hardcore triple rock sex scene. All right, I'm, exactly. I'm sold. <laughs> triple X. Uh, scene um with a great Vin diesel's here Uh oh. <laughs> so if you want to email the podcast we're at no such thing as a bad movie at gmail.com and we're on twitter and instagram uh as well at, uh, uh you can just search us at no such thing pod and consider supporting us on patreon patreon.com slash no such thing as a bad movie we have a ton of extra content on there uh you know over over a hundred uh, mini episodes where we talk about uh new movies and popular bad movies we've got commentary tracks q and a's uh it's a it's a great it's a great place and uh <laughs> next so uh, every other if you're on the five dollar level you can uh get one of those bonus episodes every two weeks and next week we're talking about the new Roadhouse uh, with special guest Joe Ramoni. So check that out. Don't you want to know what we have to say about um, the new Roadhouse? And maybe we'll talk about the old one too. Who knows? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to find me, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at April Edmansky. You can find me on all social medias under my name, Justin DeClue, D-E-C-L-O-U-X. And somebody uh, mentioned on my YouTube channel, Film Trap, that they want me to advertise it more on this show. So check it out, Film Trap. I recently did an hour-long video where I talk about beating, and by that I mean just rolling credits on, Elden Ring. Uh, you can find me, you chill, on uh, uh, Twitter, uh, Sergeant Zima, S-G-T-Z-I-M-A. And Joe, what would you like to show on our podcast? Oh boy, let's see. <laughs> what would you uh, like that to? That seems like a word shell. we shouldn't be saying. What is the root of that word? I'll be at shell. the um, the Berlin area flea market this Saturday and Sunday with <gasps> my. Just, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you can find me on all socials at Joe Ramoni, and I'm Hats Off Entertainment on YouTube. And our podcast is Almost Cult Classics, the podcast on all podcast platforms. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So check that out. Uh, yeah, big fan of your YouTube channel, Hats Off Entertainment. Um, and uh, yeah, lots of uh, really, really interesting videos on uh, older comedy movies and uh, some new uh, new stuff, too. Um, so that's yeah. Viva Rock Vegas. You were responsible for this episode, us watching I'm this sorry. movie today. It's true. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> yeah. Um, but I can't you think did of... Co- you did come to me with the idea, so... <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, it was wait, wait, wait. Colin's so Colin idea. came to Joe yeah. and said, let's do Viva Rock Vegas. No, <laughs> yes. Colin turned around at the end of this and said, Joe, this is your fault. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> you hold the blame. Uh, yes, I'm throwing you under the bus. This is why we had you on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're throwing you under the bus, putting your feet out, and running you over, literally. <laughs> Uh, just like one of those uh, rock cars. <laughs> yep. um, so yeah, that's Viva Rock Vegas. Uh, Joe, thank you for joining us. Uh, and also thank you to all of our listeners for sticking with us for 150 episodes. Uh, we've been doing this, I think, for like six years now or something like really? that. Yeah, I think it's been over five years. Uh, so thank you everyone who has supported us and thank you everyone who has listened. And uh, if you enjoy the podcast, let us know and uh, keep sending us ideas for new episodes to do and uh that's it for this week i'm april atmansky i'm justin the glue i'm colin cunningham i'm joe Armoni. thanks for having me guys thanks for being here joe and remember there's no such thing as a bad movie